Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do a noodle simulation in Blender and we're going to be using a pretty cool technique. Now keep in mind this can be a little bit processor intensive. There's a lot of simulation going on here um, but yeah this is it. I'm going to go step by step showing you guys how to simulate a bowl of noodles in Blender. You could probably do this for spaghetti as well I guess if you wanted to and other things and uh, we'll be uploading my final result to Patreon as well. So if a new scene open up in Blender, go ahead and select all of the default objects and press delete. You're then going to go shift A and under your mesh options, you're going to add in a plane, tab into edit mode. And with all of this active, you're going to go R, X, 9, 0, and you're going to hit enter. And then you're going to go to your front orthographic view or just your front view will do. And you're going to go S, Z, 4.5. So S, Z, 4.5. And then you're going to come in here, Control R, hovering over in the middle. You're going to see there's an edge. You're going to just double click to add it in. And then with that active, you can go Control I or Command I just to inverse the selection to go X and delete the vert. So now you just have this long edge here like this. You're just actually going to right click and go subdivide. And then you're going to go to your subdivision tab and let's bump it up to 30. Now keep in mind, the higher this number is, the nicer, the more nicer kind of folds you're going to have in your noodles but it's going to be much more processor intensive. So I'll dare to go up to like 35. Uh, if you guys want to go higher, um, by all means, give it a shot. Um, you might just have to make fewer noodles, but it just depends on what hardware you're running. I'm not running anything particularly too powerful. So I'm going to tab back out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my modifiers. I'm going to give this something called the skin modifier. I've covered this a while ago, I think with making like a base mesh, but um, you're going to go ahead and give it a skin modifier. And to be able to control the thickness here, you're just going to tab into edit mode. And with all of this active, you can press N to bring up your properties panel, go to your item, and then you're going to see here this mean radius. Um, you're going to grab both of these. I'm just left clicking and dragging down just to select both of these, or you can just do them separately. And um, I'm going to change this to 0 0.05. Okay, that's nice. Um, you can go thinner if you want. I'm just gonna go for 0.05. I'm gonna tab back out. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and give it a subdivision surface modifier just to round things out. And if you want smooth shading, I'll quickly show you. If you right click and go shade smooth, nothing happens. Because with the skin modifier, you have to actually enable that by going smooth shading here. Okay, I'm sure somebody will know the reason for that. I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm sure there is a reason though. So I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this, minimize this. In fact, with the um, subdivision, we can kind of just turn it off for the viewport. We don't need to see it in the viewport. Um, yeah, I'll just turn it off for now, but in the render, we'll see it, okay? So now we wanna simulate this. Let's take it up. You know, we're in um, object mode, by the way. We're gonna go G, Z, let's just move it up like so. And uh, let's now go, actually, we should probably add a surface for this interactive, with, right? Makes sense. So let's go shift A, let's add in a UV sphere. And with the UV sphere here, we're just gonna go S 2.5. So S 2.5, we're gonna hit enter. And then because we scaled this in object mode and we're working with physics, control A or command A, make sure to apply that scale, unless you scaled it in object mode. So what we're gonna do in object mode, we're gonna just select half of these verts, we're gonna go X and delete. And for now, we're gonna make this ugly looking thick ball. Don't worry, we'll make it we'll make it nicer after we've cached it. But for now, we're just gonna press A to select everything. E to extrude and then right click and then go Alt S with that still active and make a nice thick ball, okay? I know it looks ugly, don't worry about it. This is just temporary. I'm gonna tab back out and we're gonna right click and we're gonna go shade smooth. And let's also just give it a subdivision surface modifier. Okay, now we have a simulation surface. I'm just also gonna go um, G, Z and move it up till it's sitting on the floor here. And let's grab this noodle, maybe move it up a bit. So now we can grab our ball here. We can go to our physics. Let's give it a collision surface. Okay, and this is what we should have, subdivision and a collision surface. And now we're gonna grab our noodle here and let's go over to our physics and let's give it a soft body, okay? Now, um, if you were to just hit play, nothing's gonna happen at first, which is normal. So let's just go to frame one and let's just first of all, adjust a few of our settings here. So first of all, we're gonna go to the object drop down here and let's change the mass to something like 0.1 or 0.2 because we don't want it to be too heavy. We're then gonna go ahead and turn off the goal. We don't want that enabled. We're then gonna go to our edge drop down here and we're gonna go to the dampening here and we're gonna make that 47. And we're gonna come here to the collision type and make it edge. And then we're gonna to come to the aerodynamics. We're gonna to go to the type here. Let's make it lift force. 
And let's go to the factor and I'm gonna make it uh, 45. I've tried anything between 30 and 60 works good, but I found 35 is kind of like a really good in between. And then also make sure you enable the stiffness. And then we're gonna come down to the self collision tab, enable that and come to the drop down. And let's make the ball size something like 0.32. I found that 0.25 works as well. Um, that's kind of like a good range. And then with the stiffness, we're gonna make that 0.45. And with the dampening, we're just gonna make that 0.23. And now if we were to go to frame one and hit the space bar, we should see a nice kind of looking um, noodle simulation here. Now you can mess around with these values here if you want. In fact, I'm also gonna go ahead just to my subdivision surface and just enable, at least in the viewport level, just one, just so it looks a bit nicer. And this is kind of the results I got here. Now you can mess around as much as you want with the um, soft body here and try out some different values for some of these things. But this is kind of what I found works really good. Um, for this sort of thing. Now, instead of having to go and do this a whole bunch of more times, what we can do now, which is really cool, and I really love this bit, is we can actually go into edit mode with our noodle here and see this kind of um, edge that we have here that we're using. You can simply just go into your top view and go shift D to duplicate and duplicate. In fact, I'm just gonna go keep going shift D and you can make as many of these as you want. Once you're happy, you can select all of them by pressing A and then you can go shift D make a whole bunch more. Now keep in mind, the more you do this, the cooler it looks because you got more noodles, but you are gonna have a lot more computation. So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go with this many noodles for now. I'm gonna tab back out. And then to kind of have a quick rough look of this, I'm just gonna hit it, go ahead and hit the space bar, try and play it in real time. And I kind of push apart like that. So one of the things I'm gonna quickly try and do is just select my noodles. I'm just gonna to go to the dampening and make it 0.023. I think that's what I went with originally. So 0.023. And um, then I'm just gonna go to frame one again. And now I'm gonna hit the space bar. In fact, let's just go here to the ball size and let's make that 0.12. I think that if we, uh, if we take that one down a little bit, go to frame one and we hit the space bar. Okay, now those are not repelling each other so much. Okay, so that was kind of, just have a look at the dampening and the ball size when you have that sort of pushing apart issue. Um, but this is gonna be a really um, intensive thing. So what I'm gonna do, instead of trying to run it in real time here, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my cache. I'm just gonna make this 120 frames long. And over, over here, I'm gonna go to the end frame value and make it 120. And I'm gonna go ahead and save it, um, just call it noodles. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and bake and you guys can do the same. Okay, so it's now done finished caching. Now what happened is it crashed while I was caching it the first time. So I ended up having to go back to the self collision. Remember I changed the ball size down. I took it back up to 0.3. So yes, at first it kind of goes apart a little bit like that, but it's not too bad. And um, the simulation worked out nicely. So make sure that the ball size is at least um, point three or around about there, okay? So sometimes you have to kind of fiddle with this, even when you're practicing for these tutorials, it's not always exactly the same with the physics. So keep that in mind. I try my best to make sure it works, but this is kind of what we have to do. So here we have it, it's all cached out and we have a ball of noodles. So what we're gonna do now that we have this cached out is we're gonna make sure to save and we're gonna grab um, this ball and we're gonna tap into edit mode and we're just gonna delete the outside geometry and then I'm just gonna delete these two edges here. I'm gonna press A to select everything, E to extrude, Alt S, and just scale it, out, scale it out a little bit, just to make a ball like this. And I'm gonna tab back out. And yeah, that's it. You can, you can actually you know, stylize this ball however you want, but we're now done caching it out. So the reason we had a nice big thick ball like that is because sometimes it'll penetrate through a thin mesh like this. So now we have a nice elegant looking plate and we have a ball of noodles and we have our simulation like so. Now let's go shift A, add in a plane and we're gonna go S to scale that plane up. I'm gonna go G, Z, move it up till sitting, touching the bottom of the ball. And in edit mode, we're gonna scale it like this and just extrude up an edge. And now we have kind of like, we can even add a bevel to this edge over here. Maybe scale it down a bit, right click and go shade smooth. And then let's go to our front view and add in a camera. I'm gonna grab this camera, move it back, rotate it in, something like this. You guys kind of get the idea, right? Um, very simple. Let's go to our render settings. Let's make it cycles. And if you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then let's go to max samples and let's make it uh, 55. You can go higher. I'm doing tutorials, so I keep it low. But I'm just gonna go 50. 
And then you're gonna go Shift A, you're gonna add in an area light to move it up. Let's give it a strength of 250 and increase the size. And now if you go Control B, you can drag over your camera to limit the rendering to the camera view. And you can go Z, and then you can go Rendered. Now you can go Shift D to duplicate this light. I'm gonna do that a few times. Maybe one over here. So you have some nice looking lighting. And now we can grab our background. Let's give that a material. Let's make it dark like this. Then let's grab our plate. Let's go new. Let's give it a red kind of material. And let's come here to the roughness, bring it almost all the way down to make it nice and reflective. And then let's grab our noodles and go new. And let's get our base color here and kind of give it kind of like a yellowish kind of color like noodles. And we'll just leave the default roughness values as they are. And with my original, I just went in here and I just grabbed this edge and went Control B just to give it a bevel. Like so, rolled in a few extra segments and then shrunk the selection. I just added another material and assigned it and I just came here and made it black. And then I brought down its roughness as well. And I thought that little decorative bead kind of, um, I don't know, kind of added a little bit of an extra element to this, making it look kind of cool. But that's it, that's how you can make it. I'm just gonna grab my camera, zoom it in a bit more. You can go to your render settings, give it some motion blur. And I might just grab the background here and just bring the roughness down a little bit, make it a bit more reflective, maybe make it not as dark. Um, you guys, you know, experiment with whatever you want. This is kind of what I'm going with, with my um, ball of noodles here. So go ahead, save it, and let's now go and just find a nice shot where it's kind of falling and then it has some motion blur. Let's go render and render the image. And here we have it, guys. We have a nice rendered shot. You can now go ahead and you can go to your render output, select a destination on your computer. You can change it to whatever format you want. FFmpeg video if you want to go directly into video. And then under the encoding, you could make it an MP4. And then just like render out your animation. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'll be uploading my original to Patreon. And that also is a good way for you guys to support this channel. It makes future content possible for the community. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.